welcome back to our design tips webinar. As we introduced ourselves before, I am Mike and this is Mac and he will be walking us through this webinar that will be designated to discuss our newly launched robot integration kit. So as you saw before, we had a lovely marketing video that we've just recently launched that shows the capabilities of this video, of this robot integration kit. So we hope that you guys are excited and to learn more about our how to design and simulate a robot cell. So take it away, Mac. What are we gonna be discussing today? All right, let's take a look at that. Um, so again, super happy um, to uh, be presenting another webinar. Um, we have a bunch of new exciting stuff. Uh, like Michael said, we uh, kicked off our robot cell integration kit and it's gonna be primarily focused on that. But right before this, um, I'll get you up to speed with the new hardware that we just introduced. And um, lastly, we're gonna go through a, a um, design to commission cycle uh, for this type of robot cell integration kit. Uh, so I'll give you a bit more uh, insight on how to simulate and then uh, replicate that on your UR pendant. Perfect. So before we kick off this webinar, as usual, we have a Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom meeting. So please feel free to type at any time if you have any questions about anything that Mac is discussing. We will be answering them in the chat in real time. Um, also note that after each section, we will be designating a five minutes to answering your questions of that particular section. So as you can see on the content screen what's new in hardware and on machine builder followed by the introduction of the robot cell integration kit and then another one after the uh, replication for machine logic and at the end of the session we'll also be hosting we'll be getting to the rest of your questions that may have not been answered or if you have any other questions to ask us so let's kick it off all right amazing thank you mike um, so yeah, hardware. Um, I just got a sample of what we uh, have new uh, on the platform since uh, our last webinar, uh, since we have so many things. Um, so I, I got some, uh, I think what, what I find the, um, the most exciting on there. Um, so first uh, going from, from left to right, um, on the, 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 under the safety, uh, safety field, um, we have this stop switch that we'll talk about uh, a few uh, minutes later uh, with everything that's coming uh, with the new machine motion at 1.1. Um, we, uh, we have this digital IO module. It's not only for safety, uh, but uh, it can be coupled with, with safety features, but the digital IO module really like expand the possibilities uh, for your robot cell. Um, so it, it can um, communicate uh, with uh, any devices uh, that support zero 24 volt uh, digital uh, IOs, um, digital signals. So um, it, maybe you have something uh, like a, uh, an automatic saw that you want to communicate with it and just like trigger it, say go, say stop. Uh, something like maybe you, you want to activate doors, um, so, some stuff like that. So it, it's, it really goes uh, on a, a big, big spectrum. Um, next, uh, under the powertrain section, we have the power off break. Uh, so it's been, uh, I think, like long awaited. Um, uh, I mean, in, in terms of invention, it's only a few months, right? <laughs> but uh, still much needed uh, for those vertical um, uh, designs, uh, vertical axis designs. Uh, so anytime you have, a, say, like a vertical palletizer, so you mount your robot on it, uh, you want to make sure that um, for, for if for any reason you, uh, you lose power, um, you don't want your, your robot falling down. Uh, all the way to uh, to the, the the bottom stop. Uh, so this way, uh, if you add your your power off break on there, um, as soon as the the power cuts off, um, it's going to automatically apply some uh, some pressure and and break uh, your unit so that it doesn't move from the position it's at. Um, so super important. It could have been under a safety uh, section That's as true. well. <laughs> That's very very true. There's a lot of safety that we're going to be covering in this yeah. in this webinar. Yeah, exactly. So uh, anytime you have 
Anybody, anybody working around uh, uh, some um, automated equipment, uh, that's a really good thing to have. Yeah. Um, so next we have the pneumatics. Um, uh, we have this, uh, this air control uh, unit that actually uh, does uh, connect to the digital IO uh, module. Uh, so your machine motion is gonna send that uh, 24 zero volt signal to the, the air control saying like, um, uh, either like push or pull on, on your pneumatic actuator. And we have all the other supporting components like the air preparation station there. Um, in the accessories, um, I wanna start with this DIN rail. Um, so uh, very common in the, um, uh, in, in automation, in electronics, I should say. Um, so uh, again, very helpful for completing your, your workstation that works with uh, maybe something like a uh, tulip scanning system uh, that we actually just added uh, to our platform. Uh, they're, they're one of our partners now, so super nice to, to have them on board. Um, we also have this gas spring display mounting arm, uh, so it just gives you like a, uh, I think just a more effective and cheaper uh, alternative to have uh, this kind of like swivel arm to uh, attach anything from like a TV uh, to a monitor uh, or maybe just a sort of a, um, a tablet. Um, so uh, again, some some things to complete your work workstation, making make your workstation like smarter. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we have at the bottom a threaded pin that goes actually with uh, the what I like to call the three-way connector for light duty extrusions. Um, so as you can see, it, it has a, uh, a hole feature, uh, get the laser pointer out right here uh, on which you connect this threaded pin. And what this enables is um, it enables you to design some um, some boxes or um, like a st storage containers um, or any like uh, travel uh, travel cases that you would like to stack when you're you're done with them. Uh, it doesn't take take too much space and uh, is actually coming again in the same theme safer, <laughs> safer. <laughs> to work around. So when you stack them, uh, it helps uh, to keep them. Uh, nicely in place. Uh, also in the world of the light duty um, extrusion, we added this plate that I, I find really the cutest <laughs> of the platform. Um, so it's like a mini version of the L-shaped plate. Uh, but anyway, it's just to uh, show you that we keep on adding more parts to support the light duty extrusions. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and, and more are coming as well in the next few months. Um, so yeah, again, uh, enables to um, in install some panels inside of the extrusions. Uh, so the corner gusset is kind of tricky for that. And the corner gusset really works well. Um, the corner bracket, uh, I, I should say, uh, it really works well. It gives you something that is very rigid, but it takes some space inside of the T-slot. So um, uh, a little bit more tricky to add those panels uh, now with the L-shape. Uh, bracket that shouldn't be a problem. And also I want to mention that this three-way connector was also designed to leave all the, sp the space you need uh, to install those panels. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, we added a um, lockable hinge. It's actually, the, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you will, will recognize it. It's the same heavy duty hinge that we have that, that works super well, uh, but we added, uh, we modified uh, the, the center pin uh, so that now you you uh, you can add this handle on it. Well, it comes in a unit, but there's a handle on it and it allows you to really uh, break uh, your um, your design. So say that you you have um, I don't know uh, something like a card that has like a uh, a, uh, a bin that you want to pivot uh, and you want to kind of stop your bin at a certain position, uh, that's something you can do now. So just make sure to add those lockable inches. So that's a quick summary of uh, the new hardware um, for all the, um, and, and there are more things that were added since last time. And I would invite you to uh, go to our parts library and click on what's new on Benchon. The biggest piece of hardware that we we uh, yeah. revised lately, <laughs> it's the Machine Motion 1.1. Um, so uh, for those of you that are very uh, attentionate to details, you will notice that there's a few change into the, the colors. Um, <laughs> the, the, ye the yellow color change for, for orange. So slight detail here, but it's not only that, obviously. Yeah, there's a lot more, there's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so uh, yeah, we have brand new connectors for uh, the sensor port, uh, which are very durable, very nice. And um, more importantly, we added this pendant port now that uh, we added a pendant on the platform. Um, so it, it gives you a possibility uh, to uh, you know, provide something that is very convenient for your um, operators. We, uh, we also added a, a, a second ethernet port, uh, which we call uh, default ethernet. Um, so basically uh, this one will uh, bring you automatically uh, to, the right, to the right place without you know, configuring your, your IP address. It's always the same automatic like IP address. Um, and it, it is especially useful um, uh, with today's team with uh, you know, the robot cell. Uh, if you're, you're using uh, this uh, UR cap, uh, well, your, your, your ethernet port will be already occupied um, connect, since it's gonna be connected to your UR controller. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you might wanna use the, uh, the default ethernet port uh, to connect your uh, computer. Um, for, for initial setup and troubleshooting, et cetera. The biggest change is on the other side. So let's switch to the back side. Uh, so right here, uh, we have um, a brand new e-stop button. Um, we, we, you know, a, a, bit, uh, a bit more durable again, just like the, the, the uh, sensor connectors. And uh, most importantly, uh, we added two normally closed dry contacts um, uh, for, for those safety features. Um, so it's compatible with uh, most devices on the market. Um, so you have a safety in port, a safety out port, um, just to give you an example, um, you, you will connect the safety in to something like, uh, uh, you know, like a safety switch that would be connected uh, to a, uh, a door on your enclosure. Uh, so for example, if you have like a multi-axis machine that you want to leave like enclosed and, and, and ma making the, like a, a safe environment to work around. Uh, so um, you might want to add the switch onto your door. So uh, if for any reasons, uh, one of your uh, operators uh, wants to access the machine, but it's still running. Uh, so as soon as he's going to open the door, it's going to send a signal uh, to the safety in port of the machine motion, and it's just going to uh, cut all the motion uh, from the machine. The safety out would be, um, for example, uh, again, if you have like a, a uh, multiple axis uh, setup and um, you, you're working with like other uh, other types of devices uh, which might maybe you you interact with with this dig digital IO module um, but uh, again if you you have for example a vention pendant to control all of that uh, you can connect the safety out to say something like a, uh, a big miter saw that would be automated um, and uh, if for any reason uh, you're holding the, the, the vention pendant and you press on the button, uh, well, it, it's actually going to send this, this safety out signal to uh, the saw and cutting out the power uh, on this automated other machine uh, that you have connected. Um, and yeah, coming back to the part that I skipped in the hardware, this emergency stop button, uh, we, we obviously we added this uh, to give you uh, and other possibilities, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to have a quicker access to that e-stop, uh, as sometimes it's not super convenient to have the controller exactly at the same spot that you would want to have access to the e-stop very quickly. Um, it's always like super important to mm -hmm. have it like handy and uh, uh, if anything bad happens, uh, that's the first thing you want to hit. Just to give you a little bit more insight on uh, how it's designed, um, so you, you have the, uh, your e-stop buttons here uh, from the pendant from the controller. Uh, when you, uh, you push them, it goes to the safety system. And uh, what will happen is that it's gonna open uh, those three circuits, circuits here that um, uh, powers the stepper motor drive. Uh, so all the three drives um, uh, will, will, uh, will be uh, disconnected, so out of power. Uh, however, um, your single board computer will, will still uh, have some power to uh, communicate. That's pretty much it for the first parts. Uh, any questions, uh, Michael? That we do, we have a, a question from Bill and he asks, does the e-stop stop daisy chain? Very good question, uh, Bill. So um, one thing uh, that, that you can do 
um, is actually the, your, your machine motion can be daisy chain, meaning with the safety in and out, you can daisy chain them like this. Um, if you have like one machine motion in mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, one button, one e-stop button, uh, you can all daisy chain them together so that if you hit your e-stop button, it's also gonna stop the, the, the third, uh, well, second or third uh, machine motion. Anything exactly. else, uh, Michael? No, nope, that is all for now. We can go on to what is new on Machine Builder. All right. Um, so Machine Builder, um, again, we, we introduced a bunch of, of parts in there um, uh, as far as hardware, but uh, we uh, also have a bunch of new features uh, to help you design in Machine Builder. Um, so the I think that the, the, the biggest change that we did lately is the navigation compass. Um, so this, this compass will appear as soon as you uh, insert a part and you place it uh, either in the 3D space or on, on, on your design, on your existing structure. Um, so this compass uh, will help you to, um, to navigate between the, the, the different possibilities, uh, just like starting first with the orientation. Uh, so I'm sure most of you know that you can change the orientation with the left and right arrows. Uh, but we also like give give you an option to uh, do this same naviga navigation using the the left and right arrows on this compact. So clicking on it. Um, also, uh, it, it happens quite frequent frequently that um, you have some parts uh, that maybe are attached to a to a hinge uh, or a rotary actuator and would have both the possibility to rotate and also to translate. So um, you have uh, the two menus in the middle. Uh, so right now we have the, the, the RDOF, the rotate uh, degree of freedom right here, and you would have your translate uh, degree of freedom right, right there. So right now what you see in uh, sort of a, a, a darker gray, uh, would be like select. So for example, if your, your part is only attached to a hinge and you, uh, you only want to select that part, not like the whole group that moves on the hinge, uh, you can click on the four and the, the, the side of the compass and it's gonna show you here uh, the part number of the part and, um, and yeah, I'll allow you to maybe detach it, delete it if that's not what you want. Um, so that's pretty much it for the navigation compass. I'm pretty sure it's going to help you uh, to design faster. And I think it's much more convenient. Yeah. Um, so next we have the part recommendation. Um, it's not a brand new feature. It was there, uh, but the, we, we, I think we enhanced it uh, a lot. Uh, it, it used to be... Um, uh, a little bit too invasive to my liking <laughs> as I'm <laughs> designing pretty much all day long. Uh, it was uh, a bit too much in, in the, the space that I use most frequently. So we moved it um, to the top left of uh, the design screen, uh, which yeah, doesn't interfere with your mouse too much, uh, but still super, um, Super helpful, I use it all the time now, uh, especially for like uh, caster wheel mounting plates. So as you already know, we have like three models of caster wheel mounting plates and it's not always easy to know, okay, which one goes with what. And so now you just click on your caster wheel and you look under, uh, at your part recommendation and it's gonna point you to uh, the right one. Um, and also same thing for all the parts related to like light duty extrusions or um, so something like toggle clamps. You know, there, there's a, uh, a set of parts that you always going to use um, with those uh, with those extrusions or, or toggle clamps so uh, very helpful and uh, as we uh, showcase here um, you have like the ability to click on the right arrow here to see the next five uh, mm -hmm. that we recommend so make sure to try it out um, last but not least uh, we added uh, like three menus at the bottom uh, so the uh, the first one will be uh, the partner parts. Uh, I talked a bit uh, earlier today about uh, Tulip being one of our uh, partners now. And as you already know, we have UR, obviously, um, and, and Yaskawa uh, uh, on board as well. Uh, and uh, maybe more to come, I'm sure. Um, and uh, so you have this, this partner uh, uh, partner parts option at the bottom of your part browser that uh, Vivian uh, really explained uh, thoroughly during uh, last webinar. And, uh, and then right next to it, 
you have uh, my part. So like if you uh, Im import some parts uh, that, that you, you want to reuse, they're going to be there. And I'll show you an example uh, later today when we go into the CAD. And next, there's the public part. So I wanted to highlight uh, the public parts because we, we added uh, a bunch of them uh, lately. And uh, as you can see here, um, so we, we added what we like to call environment, environmental assets. Um, so basically uh, anything from like a, uh, a human body, uh, like a, uh, maybe a palette, if you're designing a palletizer with a forklift, you wanna see like how it interacts, how should I size my palletizer for uh, this kind of, uh, of setup and bins, uh, TV screens to go with that mounting arm that I just talked about in, in, the, uh, in the hardware section. Uh, so a bunch of stuff that uh, can really help you like size and see how it's gonna fit. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, the, the key points for, um, the, so for what's new on the machine builder. Um, any question about that section, Michael? We do not have any questions on that portion. So if anybody has something related to Machine Builder, feel free to send it through in the Q&A and we will jump through to the next session and we will get to that question at the end of the webinar. Amazing. Um, so next, jumping into the core of the subject, um, the robot cell integration kit. Um, all right, so let's let's get started. <laughs> this is the most exciting part of the entire <laughs> webinar. So let's 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 get into it. Yeah. All right. So um, as you might have seen in one of our posts on the, the social medias, uh, or one of our uh, e email that we sent out. Um, so this this new uh, robot cell integration kit, um, it, it's basically like the, the version two, uh, the newest version of the UR cap. Um, so what changed? Uh, many things changed. A lot. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, first, um, first and foremost, I'm going to start with uh, the numbers of axes that you can control. So uh, before it was designed to, uh, you know, move. Um, something like a range extender uh, only. So you, you, you move your, uh, uh, your gantry and then you, you put it into sequence with the, your robot arm movement, which was, which was really cool. Uh, but now we pushed it even further. Uh, you can uh, add two more axes to that and have them uh, also work in parallel. Um, so just to shed some light on that. Um, so you, for example, uh, you can make your, uh, <clears throat> your, your range extender move and uh, you can also have your robot arm uh, move in parallel. So if you say, for example, that uh, you were at a certain spot, you, you know, dropped off the part and um, you want to start moving your, your gantry while you're, you're uh, positioning your robot in a, a good configuration for, uh, for moving away from this first station. Well, you can do that at the same time in parallel. And also uh, you can uh, make the, the other invention axes move in parallel or even in combined movement if, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah, lots of possibilities now. Uh, we also added uh, the variables that will allow you to change, uh, you know, some behaviors or um, some part of your program uh, according to a new value. Uh, so for example, uh, say that uh, when you pick up a heavier payload, uh, that's, that's gonna be stored into a, a, a variable and it's gonna say to uh, your range extender, okay, so move, sl uh, move more slowly uh, because I picked up something, mm -hmm. uh, something heavy. Uh, but that's just one of the possibilities. I mean, why that can be applied. So anyway, the variables concept, I just gave you an example, but I, I just wanna highlight that it goes way beyond that and yeah. it's up to your imagination. Um, really important new change, uh, we uh, added the encoder support. Um, so uh, I'll give you an example in, in um, the setup that I created for uh, today's webinar, but um, what it can provide to you is giving you some, some feedback. Well, I'm sure uh, most of you know what, what the encoders are best at, but um, knowing that we, we work uh, with uh, stepper motors, what it enables is that you can uh, get the, the position 
uh, that the, the encoder reads. You can compare it with the drive. And if you have like a program that runs all day and, uh, and you want to make sure that no, no, uh, no steps were skipped, uh, well, you can compare that into uh, uh, Polyscope, into your, your, your RTH-pendant uh, program and uh, make some corrective action on the go uh, with uh, the, the uh, encoder reading. Uh, so giving you sort of a, uh, uh, something that, that is uh, similar to, to a, a, uh, a servo motor, not exactly, but it's like a closed loop uh, system uh, to uh, auto-correct during your, your, your whole program. Um, it also um, gives you the possibility to sort of um, reset your um, position on your drive. Uh, so uh, if for you, maybe um, uh, it's not really important if uh, for your application, if you're, you're off by say like uh, 0 0.025 um, millimeter, uh, but you just want, don't want to add up to it. So uh, what the, the, the thing is that you can do is that uh, you can take the value that you read with your encoder and uh, apply it to your drive so that uh, and have like a few checkpoints like this to remove the, some accumulative uh, error, especially like I said, if you're running something all day long, uh, you just want to get rid of those small um, differences that, that could happen. Um, but uh, generally speaking, I uh, just wanted to, to mention that, um, you know, that, 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 uh, we, we tested out uh, the stepper motors with, with all of our actuators and, and it, it um, uh, it really showed that uh, like the drives are, are, are very accurate. Um, like if you're not skipping any step, uh, you won't be, um, uh, you, you won't have a, a delta of, of your position. It's when uh, maybe like there was something obstructing or something went wrong that you would skip the step and that's where you wanna have a corrective action. But uh, again, that's why uh, many, many of our applications do not have any encoder and work super well. Um, so does that make sense, Mike? I know there was like a lot of talking, but- uh, A lot, but it does make sense. I yeah. think we went through all the benefits really, really well. So I think uh, it's really great. And if anybody has questions, feel free to send them through. We will get to them at the end of this portion. Uh, amazing, amazing. There's one last thing that I wanna talk about for this uh, cell integration kit. Um, so, uh, as you can see here, you have an e-stop button on your UART teach pendant. Uh, so with uh, machine motion, motion 1.1, <laughs> and the new safety features, uh, you can connect the safety in uh, to the UR controller uh, to uh, work. Uh, as soon as you press on that uh, teach pendant e-stop, uh, it will also make sure that the intervention motion stop. And even further than that, you can configure it uh, so that uh, if you want a protective stop to uh, trigger that uh, motion stop on the vention motion, you can also do it so. Uh, so it's gonna be up to you to, to decide. So for example, if it makes sense for you, um, like um, you, you, you could have a system that when the, the robot moves on the range extender uh, and you know would hit anything, the robot arm uh, goes into protect the stop, it's gonna stop its motion. So uh, making your robot cell safer. And let's jump straight into uh, a, uh, concrete example. Um, so um, I uh, designed here a, uh, an example of a robot cell. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to do is really like a walkthrough of a typical um, design to commission process for a robot cell. Um, so uh, we're gonna straight, uh, jump straight into the machine builder. I'm going to give you uh, a little pointers on how I designed uh, this, uh, this cell uh, more particularly. And um, uh, we're going to tackle um, sort of the simulation part. So as soon as you, you have like your, your, uh, your part inside your, your builder, you, you can sort of do this um, range of motion assessment and see, um, and see if you, you can reach everything with your robot arm and resize if necessary. Um, and then you can uh, create the simulation program with machine logic uh, and also um, preparing your final program that you will uh, sort of uh, create with your UR uh, teach pendant. So that's, that's what I wanna tackle right now. Uh, so let's switch gears and go to this. So, um, 
just to um, give you an advice um, when you're working with machine logic, um, make sure to uh, refresh your screen. Like maybe like you left for for, uh, for an hour for lunch and you were working on something on machine logic. Uh, you want to like refresh your screen because like uh, your uh, your browser is going to time out and uh, you will try to press on that on that play button and nothing will play and you're going to be like, hey, what's going on? So just make a refresh. Mm -hmm. uh, it just means that it timed out. So that's why I wanted to start off with a fresh page here. Um, so first, uh, why don't I start with uh, playing this, this sequence that I, that I want to uh, show to you. It's always nice to see it in action first. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the idea here is that the robot is going to pick up uh, some raw material inside that bin. At first, uh, opens up the first door here, puts it in this machine, picks up another one, goes to the second machine. So we want to you know, machine some parts like that. Uh, so it's coming back here to the first machine. Uh, so let's assume that the first part is ready, picks up the part, and then it's going to go to the inspection station. So uh, picks up the, the finished part, puts it on this inspection station, uh, make it making it turn so that the camera can see it under all of its angle. Um, and then uh, it's going to go back to the first machine uh, to place in, in some new raw material, starting a new cycle on this one. Robots come back, it comes back and pick up the part. Uh, and decides if it's a good or bad part, according to the camera. Uh, puts it either in the bin if it's a bad part, or on the tray if it's a good part. Um, and you know, it's going to fill the tray until it's full. And and then with your motorized conveyor, you're going to be able to uh, move this tray uh, on, on out to the next station on your line. Um, and then does the same thing with the, the second machine, uh, on and on. So that's, uh, that's why I call it a CNC tending and inspection machine, uh, robot cell, I mean. Um, so uh, starting first with um, how I, I designed it. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this is a, um, a design that uh, we we have in the, the, the public design that you can find under the public design uh, under Vention Official. It's a, uh, a seven, action, seven axis uh, that is um, 2.3 meter long, uh, so about like two meter uh, long stroke of net stroke. Um, so you, uh, you can start uh, with this design and like customize it and then add the other um, this, the, all the other uh, cards and, and, and stations and structures around it. So um, as you uh, probably noticed, <laughs> the two big CNC machines here. Um, so I took them uh, from the public parts uh, that I uh, just discussed. So they're right here. You have some CNC lathe and CNC milling machine, uh, just to give you a sense of how big should my range extender be. Uh, now that uh, we have rack and pinion, as uh, Vivian showed, uh, uh, I think was what, last, last month. Or, seminar. Um, so we can make super long axes. Um, so yeah, again, if you have like five of them, you could have uh, extended this this range extender, and uh, instead of going for a belt, go for rack mm -hmm. and pinion. Um, so yeah, so I just added them. So uh, just to show you, if you want to take the other one there, so you just click on it. It's going to appear at the tip of your mouse. You place it wherever you want. Um, and something that uh, not a lot of people know. Uh, so when you have a, a part like that and you want to move it on, under like a 2D plane, you can uh, click on it and then click move and rotate. And, and then you can use the left and right arrow to find those 2D planes. So if I want to move it like straight up to this diagonal, instead of doing like X and Y, you can use this 2D plane like that. So just a quick tip, again, like using left and right arrow to switch from these modes. Um, so yeah, I added this. Um, I also added the bins. Um, and I uh, basically designed my structure around my, um, uh, my CNC. So making sure that the height of my uh, range extender was high enough uh, to match uh, you know, that, that, uh, that structure here and making sure that I can uh, safely go in 
Um, so you can again click on one of the bearings and uh, move your, your gantry to the right spot. And um, as we, we shown before, make sure to use the edit robot to do that uh, uh, reach study. So uh, maybe you want to move it like this, uh, press escape, move it again and adjust it so that you can go inside. I'll just do, do it very quickly just to refresh uh, your mind if, if you don't remind, uh, remember how we how it can be done. So we can drag the ball like this and see okay, how far did that go and, and come back. Um, and you can even manipulate that uh, while you're um, moving your, your, while you're playing your sequence, sorry, uh, with, with machine logic. So um, if, you, if you want to add like more time between the sequences, uh, you can do so. Um, so, so yeah, so I sized it at first, making sure it was tall enough. Uh, and I did the same thing with uh, all the components around. Um, so uh, creating this, uh, those two buggies uh, for um, raw material and bad parts. Um, they're actually the same, but just making sure they're at the right height so that the robot can pick them up. Um, same thing with that uh, little conveyor here. And lastly, the inspection station, as you uh, seen in the demo uh, that I've just played, it has a rotary in, uh, actuator, which we also call indexer. Um, and I uh, added some imported parts that I have here um, for those two cameras, uh, just to you know have a setup of of inspecting for quality. Um, make sure again to add a machine motion there. Um, it's going to automatically automatically be a 1.1 now, so it's always going to have those two uh, safety in and out. Design is complete. Uh, you want to simulate it like, as I shown. Um, so you want to go here into machine logic. And uh, so, uh, like like I said, the goal is is not necessarily to have uh, a program that you want to run because you're you're using the robot cell integration kit. So you're using the UR cap, the US version of the UR cap. Uh, so. Um, uh, basically, uh, again, it's to 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 push even further, um, sort of your your not not only your reach study, but making sure that you have all the travels and everything. So um, the, your uh, your sequence and your application is not going to look exactly like uh, the one that I presented um, last time. Uh, with, uh, on the, the, the webinar that I did specifically for machine logic, mm -hmm. where I always encourage everybody to uh, create as many sequence as you need for everything that you repeat uh, or you think that you're gonna repeat in your master sequence. Uh, as you can see here, I have a long master sequence that repeats a lot of things. Uh, but the idea behind that is that it gives me sort of a plan that I can uh, then duplicate, like mm -hmm. replicate, um, on my UR teach pendant. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. So um, to run you through uh, the different uh, steps of the sequence, uh, always start by, by homing. So uh, homing the range extender, saving the, the zero, right? Um, and then uh, you always want to set an acceleration in the speed. Uh, so again, um, I, I, I put in there all arbitrary numbers, as you will notice. Um, but uh, if you can, you know, get closer to, to the speed you intend to use, um, it's going to give you a better sense of how much time your cycle takes, as it, it's going to really uh, be um, uh, taking this this uh, this exact speed and uh, really sh showing to you uh, when you when you press play. Uh, so, for example, if I reduce that to 100 and I press play, you're going to see the difference. So it's going to always home to the same speed. And then, well, I, I I made it wait for five seconds, so it goes a lot more slowly than last time. Uh, so I'm just going to stop it, and uh, we're going to. Do, uh, we're going to go back to our first step. Uh, so it seems like it gets stuck. It gets stuck at the other side. So uh, I'll just um, well, I'll, I'll go. Uh, I'll follow. I'll continue on the the, the step here, and and then I'll uh, I'll refresh my screen. Um, oh, there you go. So it did work. Um, so here, yeah, I'm setting my speed. So I'm going to set it back to eight thousand five hundred. Um, 
and then uh, here digital output um, so in this case again it's for simulating and really like making your uh, your plan like sort of like writing a plan for uh, how you're going to program it um, so this digital output uh, in in the, the, the simulation here, it's, it's not going to uh, make anything move. Uh, but in reality, uh, what we want to do is we want to communicate with that IO module here. And we want to uh, make sure to send a signal to the door of your uh, CNC mill machine. Uh, so uh, as, as you can see, uh, we, we need that door uh, to open uh, when the robot needs to uh, either like uh, place the part in or uh, pick it up. So, um, so yeah, so you're going to send a, uh, a digital output signal. Uh, the device here, you have choice from one, two, or three um, because you have up to three uh, digital I.O. module on per port, but uh, you can daisy chain those and, and have even more. Um, so device one, two, or three, so we're going on device one. Uh, the pin is going to be um, one of the, the, the uh, either input, uh, well, in this case, it's going to be an output pin. So we have up to four output pins. This one, I, I use the pin zero. Uh, so that my pin zero is going to be associated with my first milling machine here, the, the one uh, closest to the raw material part and closest to the, the conveyor. Um, so yeah, so make sure to uh, you know keep that in mind. Uh, so pin zero value zero or one, so 24 volt or zero. Uh, in this case, uh, when I send one, I mean open the door, and then when I send zero, it means shut the door. Um, so yeah, so going back uh, to uh, the, the, the very start, so homing my my range extender, sending the speed acceleration, uh, asking. The CNC machine to open the door. Uh, then I added five seconds. Again, it's a, it's a bit like arbitrary, um, but five seconds to uh, for the robot to place uh, the piece of raw material in it, um, and then uh, go out, uh, close the door. So pin zero means first machine. Value zero means shut the door. Um, device is always going to be one, as we all, uh, only have one digital mo uh, digital I/O module. Um, then, uh, right after we shut this this door, we want to open up the the other one, as this is where we're going next. Mm -hmm. So, opens the pin one. So, pin one is going to be the second machine, and value one for opening the door, uh, moving the robot to the right position. So, move absolute uh, the range extender. Uh, that's how I called it, uh, to uh, two meter. Um, so just a quick uh, reminder on move absolute and move relative. Um, so I, I, I strongly suggest you to use move absolute anytime you can. Um, so meaning that if it's not something like incremental or um, something that depends on something else, that's, that's the kind of situation where you want to use uh, move relative. Uh, like I, I've shown in uh, one of my previous webinar, like if you have something that you want to repeat, like a movement that always go like like a, I did like a grid pattern, it's always the same increment. So I want to move relative by 10 millimeters each time. Um, but in this case, I want to move to positions that I already know on that range extender. So I'm going to use the move absolute. Um, so then. Um, I'm going to wait for, again, uh, five seconds to uh, put the part in, um, just to go a bit more quickly, close the door, uh, then open the, the door of the first machine to pick up the, the, the nice uh, machine part. Um, then uh, coming back to that uh, inspection uh, station, uh, that's, that's where my, my position is at at the same time, same position, more convenient. Um, and then put the part on the on the inspection station on the road area indexer, and uh, then here that's that's the um, an interesting uh, part of the sequence. Uh, so um, when when you're going to be into your uh, UR teach pendant, you're going to be able to do a parallel move, uh, like I've uh, described a bit earlier in the webinar. Uh, so how to um, 
simulate that inside machine logic. You're going to need to use this uh, lightning bolt um, icon here, which is run sequence. Um, and you need to select call. So call will run in parallel and execute will run it uh, in Siri. Uh, so make sure to use call, create a second uh, piece of sequence, mm -hmm. I just said, uh, to move uh, this rotary indexer uh, by seven, uh, 720 degrees. Uh, so uh, if, if, you, if you go in terms of indexer, the millimeter will, will equal degrees. Um, and then, uh, so two turns, basically. Um, again, very arbitrary. Um, while I want, I want the, the machine to do that while I'm moving my robot, to um, to actually feed my first machine with a new part, so that's that's what the the, the next few lines are are for. Um, again, I just want to uh, put uh, put some more highlight on um, the fact that this simulation really allows you to uh, do like the architecture of your of your sequence and and find out uh, maybe some opportunities to uh, reduce the, the the cycle time. Of your of your process and uh, benefit even more uh, of your 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 range extender and make sure that your robot is is working uh, really in optimal uh, in, in optimal conditions. I would say um, like no one you want don't want your your robot arm to be sitting there waiting for something else to happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why my my, my sequence is uh, you know. Uh, uh, it, like the robot, it's, it's, it's always moving. It's, it's moving from one station to another. Like it's, I think we're really like maximizing the the, the usage of the robot. Exactly. Um, so yeah. So the next uh, the next step, uh, like I've shown into the demo, uh, again, it's it's very similar to uh, what I've just shown. It's like going to a spot, opening the doors, uh, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And I did the same thing for the second machine. So I want to, I'm gonna spare you on the, the 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 same details here. But as you can see, I'm gonna call the uh, rotary actuator again for uh, the second part the second that was machine. to be inspected, and and so on. So we're gonna repeat that cycle all day long. Uh, until uh, yeah, until your tray is full, and then you want to move it to another spot, receive a new tray, etc. Uh, so that's how you're gonna uh, simulate it uh, inside machine logic. Uh, one thing um, that I want to uh, show you is the configuration. So um, if I go here under under configuration, I. I, I uh, that's the first thing that you want to do initially. It kind of skipped it because once it's done, you just forget about it. But yeah. uh, it's it's you're excited the... to get it working. You just want to see yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> what moves. What moves? Um, yeah. So um, always excited. Uh, yeah. There we go. This moves. Um, yeah. So make sure to configure uh, your access first. Uh, so uh, the first one is a belt actuator. So we're going to be able to select it here. Um, and um, you have uh, two sensors. You need two sensors to uh, make your belt actuator work. Um, and uh, you can uh, you can quickly find uh, which which one is which. Uh, not only by um, uh, when, when you actually like press on, uh, on when you select one of uh, one of them, uh, it's going to highlight it. Mm -hmm. As you can see here in green, uh, it might be a bit uh, subtle, but if you zoom in. And we will see it, so it highlights uh, or the rotator to give you. Um, so you absolutely need the homing sensor to uh, make it work in uh, in the, the machine logic program. Um, what I did, <laughs> actually, uh, as a you know, as a reminder that uh, of what you will need to do in real life, uh, you will need to uh, put a uh, a jumper uh, in the the, the the sensor A port. Uh, of your you have your indexer, so I, I always put my uh, sensor at the same place, uh, just to remind me uh, when I need to commission it uh, that I need uh, to uh, make um, make sure that to put the jumper there. So it's actually here, as this one is the power for my stepper motor. Um, all right, so yeah, and the end step sensor uh, is not required for um, your indexer. Um, so yeah, sorry for going back to uh, the configuration at, uh, at the end. Make sure to do that first. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the machine logic part. Uh, so going to the next part, the replica replicating your machine logic program with the UR pendant. Uh, so first, um, as, um, as you might already know, for uh, everybody has 
have access to the UR cap, uh, you need to uh, use that USB key that we sent out and, and uh, connect it to your UR teach pendant to install uh, the UR cap, the Vention UR cap. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing with the new version. Uh, now I'm going to switch back uh, to uh, the machine builder. So um, I, I will take this opportunity to show you a shortcut to go to the tech docs as uh, we uh, detailed all the all that you need to know um, to uh, you know get uh, your your UR cap set up uh, with the UR teach pendant. Uh, so if you go into help at the right on the right toolbar of your screen. Um, you're going to find here Tech Docs, the third menu uh, from the left, and then you're going to click on Browse Document. It's going to bring you to the Vention Tech Docs, and uh, you're going to want to click on Machine Motion, Universal Robots, and UR Cell Integration Kit. Um, so that's where we detailed uh, the whole procedure on how to install it, setting it up. And then I'm just going to go straight forward to installation. Uh, so installation screen is your axis configuration. Uh, so that's where we start. <laughs> Don't do like me. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so you will need to go um, through this access configuration first on, on, the, on your teach pendant. As you can see, uh, the menu is very similar to what we have in machine logic. It gives you the different possibilities in terms of actuator that we have now. I'm sure there's more to come. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it will like auto adjust the gain. Uh, if, uh, if you want to double check, uh, you can uh, click on the, the other um, sections of this uh, tech docs and all the specs are given for all the actuators and you can find the, the gain there, mecha mechanical gain. Um, your micro stepping that you will find uh, with your um, automation system diagram that we now provide with all uh, automated solutions. Um, and then here, very importantly, as you might have seen in the, the demo sequence that I've built, um, the, uh, the rotary indexer was spinning quite fast, <laughs> maybe too fast to... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's where you can actually uh, set up that speed for this uh, actuator. So I, I would have uh, put a much slower speed for the rotary actuator. And uh, as it moves uh, parallel in, in parallel with the range extender to a higher speed. Um, and then uh, you can uh, check this, this box to start at home. Uh, you can check this one if you uh, want to reverse your axes and, and make it uh, go naturally in the other opposite direction. Um, and if you have a gearbox, uh, that's where you, you want to check the box. To, um, uh, since it's going to impact your mechanical gain, it's going to divide it by five. Uh, so very important to check that box if you have a gearbox. Um, so next, uh, again, you, you take uh, your, your, um, your code that you have, well, it's not really your code, your program that you have inside uh, machine logic. So you can have this window open, open your master sequence and slowly go down the list. And um, just like uh, you were able to do it with the, the, the previous uh, Vention, uh, UR cap, uh, you're going to do it uh, with a new interface, yes, but uh, very similar again, uh, giving you those uh, new possibilities to like get position. Um, as I said, like to read the, the, the position of the drive or the encoder or start a parallel move like I did here. Uh, so similar to call inside machine logic, uh, call, which is the lightning bolt here. Um, and uh, again, if you want to make uh, more than one access move, uh, you simply have to click the box and enter the final position for um, the axis that you want to move uh, at the same time. Um, so one or multiple axis, as you can see. Um, and again, uh, you can select absolute or relative, just like in machine logic. So really the... I think that the biggest uh, difference between the two uh, are going to be um, 
the, 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 the parallel move, the kind of the access configuration and the get position. So other, um, other functions that, uh, you know, you, you can sort of translate, but you're going to, uh, need to put a bit, a uh, little bit more attention to details on those ones. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. Um, it's, as you can see, it's, it's also an interface with selectable menus. Uh, so it's also, uh, pretty much straightforward and, uh, I would, strongly suggest you to uh, go through this uh, this article that that uh, we uh, we wrote uh, for um, uh, for the, the 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 new UR cap with this new interface uh, so I think pretty much everything is in there um, yeah so make sure to go there like I said from uh, from the machine builder you're gonna click on that help button and click on tech docs Browse, do, uh, browse documents or from the uh, home page uh, you're going to go into resources and okay. then tech docs, tech docs same way all right so thank you very much everyone this has been a lovely design tips webinar this, and again if you ever have to email us with any questions or suggestions for this webinar feel free to email us at marketingadvention.cc thank you again for joining us and we'll see you guys at the next one